Cheapo. I'll tell you what folks, I think Poundland's foray into the realm of original action figure series has been doing quite well for them, because they're still producing them! How totally unexpected. No wait, the other one. Let's see what they're firing into our collective faces at the moment, shall we? Yep, hot off the shelves, it's Beast Warrior! From a line apparently called Journey to Creation. I have absolutely no idea what that's supposed to mean. And yes, it is from our good old friends at Fantastic, how I love them so. Yeah, so the idea here is we've got some kind of uh, half-human, half-non-human animal hybrid thing going on with medieval weaponry, weird armour, and astonishingly badly painted shrieky faces. <coughs> on the back are the other ones you can get, but I can actually show you them as opposed to pictures of them, so we'll do that. Something that amuses me with these, by the way, collector-friendly packaging. Seriously, you can open it up and then put them back mint on cards. <laughs> because we're all going to be collecting these, aren't we? I love that noise. You probably don't, because it's very loud through the camcorder. So, let's have a look at Billy here, shall we? On your journey to creation, are you? Love, love, I'm, I'm just off to creation. Do you want to get some milk on the way back? Oh, no, no. They only sell those at Tesco. I'm going to creation. Anyway, I have no idea what that name means, but my god, the figures are interesting. That's really quite mutatedly frightening. If they'd painted it right, it would probably be a lot nicer. It's just a very loose paint glop. Figures themselves, well, they've got some articulation and they hold together. Fairly cheap plastic, not the worst I've come across by any stretch of the imagination, but old Shrieky Wolfie here. Well, let's give him his crossbow to see him in all his glory. Does it fit in his hand? That'll be a bloody miracle. No, it doesn't. What about the other one? Nearly. And by nearly, I mean not at all. Oh well, you'll just have to hold it like that. I'm sure that's not at all dangerous. Anyway, let's get another close-up of that, because I can't quite get enough of that one. And what's next? <clears throat> His friend the Minotaur. Moobs. Yes, he's got a big sort of World of Warcrafty double chevron axe thing going on. And a big pair of boots. And a giant demonic cod piece. Hang on. This needs... It's a ah, inspection. It doesn't need it. In fact, it, you probably need to not look at it, but we're going to anyway. Yeah, keep your junk in that, lads. That'll protect it in a fight. Good God. I think how heavy that would be. It's only held on by this sort of weird strip of blue tarpaulin anyway. Face-wise, yep. His job doesn't have a dental plan. We can work that one out. And he's got this giant thing which... Ah, good God, you have to mutilate his... Oh, no, it's ah, clearly designed for this hand. Sorry, Minotaur. There we are. He can hold his own weapon. He's a clever boy. Not like stupid Wolfie. Away with ye. Well, there he is. Off to uh, do whatever the hell you would do with an axe like that. The answer is hurt your arms and back, and that's probably it. Next, Pighead Knight. Pighead Knight. Pighead Knight. It's like they've been going through the bins of where they made Dark Souls or something. I'm not entirely impressed with Pighead Knight. He's sort of got this piggy head. He's got the armour of a knight and he's got a bloody great shield. He appears to have no weapon. Well, that's a shame for him. Perhaps he can just use his horrendously mangled tusks in order to uh, destroy the enemy. Or maybe he's just frickin' useless. I'm going to stick with that one. And the last one. It's more World of Warcraft than World of Warcraft was. We've got sort of giant winged axe thing going on. Ah, uh, glad to see the uh, giant cod piece has made a return, although made out of bone this time. Is it the same design? Mm, no, it's different. This one's demonic, this one's skeletal. Marvellous. Well, there we are. A big old orc with a big old horn coming out of his big old head. Unicorn orc? Uni orc? Jeff the orc who happens to have a unicorn horn? Yes, that's it. That's the catchiest name, definitely. Bless his heart. There's only one thing that's really upset me about this series. I didn't manage to find all of them. I only found four out of six. Look, I didn't manage to get Screeching Demonic Hell Knight and Birdhead Fred, who again seems to have a face on his crotch, and that does seem to be the uh, sort of uh, motif of this series. The more I look at these, the more these are weirding me out. I've got to be honest with you, this one, I really wish I'd got that one. That's like something that would give your child nightmares for a year if you gave it to them. And people must have been buying it because there weren't any on the shelves. Astonishing. Anyway, thank God that was something a bit different and it wasn't Bloody Pirates again. Next up, Bloody Pirates again. Yarr. Yep, 
we can't get enough of Pirates in Poundland. Gone are the big carded versions, now they've got their own little boxes, and they are called Pirates of the Sea, as opposed to Pirates of the Air, Pirates of the Volcano, or Pirates of Alternate Dimension Vlob. Pirates, just in case you didn't get it from saying Pirates right next to it. Well, what's this guy like? Answer? In a hell of somebody else's making, by the looks of it. He managed to fall off the tree and hit the ugly branch every time. Bless him, look at him. I wonder how close I can get this to focus. Yeah, that's actually frightening. No. It's like he tried to put on his eye makeup and somehow managed to stab his own eye out of its socket. And somebody's been hammering on his nose rather heavily as well. He does look quite piratey though, other than that. Sort of uh, shitty raggy clothes. Got himself a... oh god no, don't tell me. Oh, what's on the back? Comedy pirate, comedy ship. Mm, not so interested in that. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Oh, just as proof. Yes. It's fantastic again. His weapon, this thing keeps appearing. I think this is like a Chap Mai mould or something. Um, who are uh, budget Chinese action figure makers. A giant hand on a stick. Like a big back scratcher. I don't understand how you're supposed to use that in battle, really. Neither does he, so he can't hold it. We're number one. Oh. No, you're supposed to bring a giant foam hand, not a big metal gauntlet on a stick. I do like the figure though, it's strangely detailed and uh, sort of scrawny and ill-looking, which pirates probably would have been. Although they'd probably look a bit more human than that and wouldn't have so much sprue left around their head. Right, give us another pirate. Oh my giddy aunt. Out of the box with you. We need to see this one as clearly as possible. Yeah, come on. Don't be shy. Take your ludicrous harpoon and throw it away. Right, let's try and work out what's supposed to be going on here. I'm guessing they're supposed to have painted it in the right places? What do you think? Um, so yeah, this eye has sort of moved out of its socket onto his nose, the other one's slivered across his face, and the actual beard just looks like sort of rot or some kind of mould that has affixed itself to his head. Should probably get that scene to, mate. Um, the actual figures, again, quite interesting. Giant cuffs, four holes in the back for holding on his dodgy jacket, and a peg leg that looks more like the machine gun one from Planet Terror. That's interesting. Well, I tell you what, you're going to have a real difficult time on OK Cupid with that mugshot. I would suggest a darkened room for your photo, mate, because it's going to be a hard one to disguise. Right, next up we have Axe, as not used on ships, probably. And oh my goodness, it looks more human than the last ones. Not that you can tell. Focus. Thank you, dear. Hmm, very, very clearly defined tattoo, unlike the rest of the paint. Again, eyes not central. A bit of a scar going on there, although it looks like he's drawn it on with a marker pen, to be brutally honest to you. He looks kind of suspicious of somebody to his right. Hmm. Hmm. I think he's shoplifting. Yeah, again, it looks quite piratey though, in its way. I don't quite get the legs. I think they were supposed to be um, painted skin colour, but they've only painted the toes on that foot. So it looks like his legs have been horribly burned. I think that was a feature of the last ones we did from Poundland. Again, recurring motif, burned leg pirates. And finally, oh my godly goodness. Ah, I really should have opened these first. I didn't think I was going to bother, but the faces have been quite magical. So he's got some sort of serrated cutlass, that makes sense. What doesn't make sense is the face of Derp Beard. Bless his heart. Yep, that's clearly a wig, for starters. None of his clothes seem to fit. Um, that face. Oh, that face. And he's got the captain's hat. Maybe they just gave it to him because they felt sorry for him. Deary me. He is. It's like a uh, sort of cross between somebody horribly mutilated in a car accident and Ricky Gervais. Hmm. Anyway, you go off to Twitter and talk constantly about atheism. It'll be great. Right, what's next? How about special weapons and tactics? action figure, just in case you thought it was a giant rat or something. Anything else on the bottom? Well, the fantastic logo, generic soldier in the background, probably nicked from a video game, they usually are. And indeed, collector-friendly packaging for police. Anyone else getting a Virtua Cop vibe from this one? I certainly am. So thinking about it, it must have been about 20 years ago, I bought a knockoff Virtua Cop figure from Pound Stretcher. It even had a really precisely uh, made fake Virtua gun, which I think I used in the previous video before I lost it. Ah, uh, those were the days. Anyway, let's talk about this man here and his uh, protective cod piece with a big scratch on it. Somebody shot him in the crotch. Man, remind me not to become a SWAT member. Uh, come on. 
open, open. Hey. I bet he doesn't hold his gun. Why don't they ever hold their weapons? Articulation is weak. You know, sort of Star Wars figurey, but all the limbs are in weird positions. Do you know, I didn't really check the articulation on these. Oh yeah, obvious. Much better than usual, but these ones... Mm. He's got sort of a gas mask which won't come off or fit on his face. Various other little things hanging on. Big hole in his back for when they need to refuel him. And this is not really going to work, is it? Well, he can kind of hold it. If you don't mind it looking like he'd break his own frickin' arm if he dared to try it. But hey, cool glasses, man. It reminds me of Robocop and the Ultra Police, although that's not a good thing. Next. Oh yes, there's more. I found four of them. There's this guy with his uh, night vision goggles down. His gun, which is like DLC for Gears of War or something. I've got no idea. Big old police vest and, yeah, whatever that... Actually, no, I'm going to remove this one. So I've just spotted what the hell is his pose? Weird place for a walkie-talkie. I've just got, got like an old bucket on his head. I forgot my helmet, so I had to borrow Gran's dish. Um, yeah, he's constantly like this. I don't really understand what's doing. Is he got like a wine bottle up his ass, and he's trying to walk along without breaking it? That's what it is. He's smuggling booze. And yeah, this is apparently his gun which doesn't fit in his hands anyway, because it's obviously far too big and ridiculous. Oh well, there we are. At least you can sit like that and look like you're riding an invisible motorbike. Next! Ah, a lovely red chain, or whatever the hell that's supposed to be across his armour. And night vision goggles which he's flipped up and don't look like they flip down. And a shotgun literally as big as he is. Oh my god, what's the pose on this one? Hang on. Go on, will he hold the shotgun? We know he won't. <clears throat> oh, close. Oh my god, it's the best one. Look, looks frickin' ridiculous, but it kind of works. Oh, look, another floating gas mask. Um, yeah, this one doesn't have articulated legs. He's permanently in this non-standing position. That makes no sense to me at all. Why is he articulated differently? Why are his legs in this pose? What's gone wrong? Fantastic. What's happening? Are the drugs too much for you? Hmm. I don't know. I hope the last one's better. Well, maybe. Oh my god. Oh my god, he's literally only got one eye, look! And he had the one eye. He can see into your soul. Hmm. Also, his hands look like he could actually hold a gun properly, and the gun isn't... Well, it is slightly stupidly oversized, but not like uh, ludicrously so. We should be on to a winner here, lad. And... Come on. <sighs> Reminds me of the old Action Force figures. They used to have uh, hands like this. Ah, look, he's squinting so he can aim his rifle. There we are. Oh, my God. We have a winner, gentlemen. Unfortunately, again, no articulation of the legs, which is weird, but it does actually look far better than all the others. Well done, SWAT. You are properly special weapons and tactics and not stupid wankers and testicles like the other ones. Oh, incidentally, I picked this up as well. This is not part of a series, so it's cheating slightly, but I had to show you this. To infinity and beyond, it's SWAT Academy SWAT team. Look like they've graduated with all the key they've got. What's on the back? Nothing. Is it fantastic? Yes, there we are. Everything's better. Yeah, we've got this sort of um, Mitchell and Man stroke Buzz Lightyear figure here, who's off to defuse some bombs, I imagine. Hence the huge amount of armour he's got going on, and all the wire cutters, and the Atari Jaguar control pad on his arm. What I'm slightly worrying is his flesh appears to have moulded into the suit, a bit like one of the big daddies from Bioshock. And I tell you what, mate, you definitely want to be putting that uh, visor down. As a bomb goes off and your face is free, your whole head will turn into kimchi and it'll be most unpleasant. But not as unpleasant as your friend here. Because he's got some sort of mask on, but they've painted it a flesh colour, making him look like some sort of hideous alien creature. Maybe he is. Maybe that is the secret of the SWAT team. They came from another galaxy to protect us from our own murder. Or something. Ah, well that's the end of that. Oh wait, no it isn't. Do you remember, quite some time ago, I got this whole series of fake Gears of War figures called Bionicle of War 2. Look, it's Marcus Phoenix. 
except super low quality. Well, go back and look for that video if you haven't seen it. If you have seen it, keep watching this one. Um, yeah, basically these disappeared from the shops, and I may have had a hand in that, because uh, the main sort of intellectual property lawyer for Epic Games got in touch with me and said, you couldn't give us the address off the back of those, could you? And I was like, yep, because I happen to know that you actually do make action figures, and you probably don't want people thinking they're this shit. So they did indeed disappear off the shelves. Oh yeah, you know what's coming next, don't you? Poundland appeared to have bought them up, um, given the fantastic makeover, and put them out in generic packaging. Presenting Power Warriors Zombie Wars. The packaging is literally identical. All you see, it's got the weird shapes around here. So we're going around the Bionicle of War 2 logo. And the bit at the bottom, and rather than the interesting stuff on the back telling you about Damon Bird and all that, it's just the generic background. And a particularly good one on this. Marcus appears to be crying ketchup whilst dribbling it out of his face, and his skin has grown over his own helmet. Hooray! I've been sent loads of these, incidentally. I've got uh, various different types. This one, more flesh on the helmet, and more stuff oozing out of the mouth, but nothing out of the eyes. Um, particularly good are the Damon figures. This is a pretty classic one, the sort of uh, withered joker in drag going on. But this one I felt was a little bit special. Yeah. Well done, lads. Quality control? Not so much. But hey, at least they're sold cheaply and probably have little bits of plastic that break off and stick in children's retinas. But other than that, they're absolutely brilliant. Anyway, that's plenty enough of this sort of thing. We look forward to the next series of figures they'll be doing, which will be, I don't know, famous serial killers, or uh, men with slightly disappointing hats, or something along those lines. Well, oh, let's face it, nobody's ever going to beat Dinosaur Disguise Hitler from last time. Ah, will they ever learn? <laughs>